Good evening. This is the Eye of the Storm podcast for the S&P 500 for Monday, April 25th, 2022. Again, interesting day in the markets. Um, I'm going to start here on the daily chart. I have quite a few things I want to unpack and, and, and share tonight. Uh, primarily, I want to discuss how we're not actually going building blocks moving in the up direction. We're starting from that highest position and now working our way back down through a corrective process. And so I want to be able to pull in what we've done, how that fits and how it affects and should include what we're doing now in terms of that big picture. So I want to be more clear on that big picture. I think I have, but I want to be more clear on that big picture in terms of the depth, the the velocity, the volatility, and the length of time. And there's we've not been doing this for very long in terms of this correction. So again, starting with that big picture, and we're going to just jump right in, but starting with that biggest picture that I have is that I believe that the 6808 level completed a super cycle third wave. That super cycle third wave likely began in 1932, I believe, or at least 1942, one of the, somewhere in there. So it's either 80 years old or 90 years old, but I believe it's 90. And that would be, that's the largest part of the correction that we're doing. We're correcting that much advance. And that advance included recessions, collapses, crashes, all kinds of things, because all of those years were covered. Wars, on and on and on. Oil embargoes, et cetera, et cetera. So we've got a lot to correct. And so we're correcting. Uh, it'll come in the form of an ABC structure on a cycle degree, on a primary degree, and on an intermediate degree. So the structure is going to be either an AB, it's always going to be an ABC, but it's either going to be a zigzag ABC or it will be a flat ABC. So right now I'm beginning to count what we're in as a an zigzag on the primary degree level. So that suggests that on the intermediate degree, I'm going to be putting in an intermediate five wave decline to form wave A of primary, primary wave A, and then move into a primary wave B. So the two forms it can take is that it'll end up being five waves down to form primary A, and then, or it'll be in and of itself, intermediate wave A, intermediate wave B, and intermediate C wave, and then that becomes primary wave A. So those are our two choices. Right now, I'm counting it as if it's going to be an intermediate degree, five waves down to form wave A. Now, having said that, intermediate wave one, right there, two right there, oh, excuse me, to over here, uh, encompasses 707 points. Intermediate wave two, there, two there, covers 601. Now we're beginning intermediate wave three, which we now know because I keep repeating myself that it will consist of five waves of minor degree. So I can change this. I'm sorry, I'll put an intermediate there. So minor wave one of intermediate wave three is 275 points. So that's from that high to that low, it's 275 points. Minor wave, minute wave one of minor wave three is 316 points. So I know that the minute degree wave one is larger than the minor degree wave one, but it's because it's within a larger minor degree wave three. So it's subdividing and it's continuing to subdivide again. This structure, when I take a look at the daily, excuse me, and I take a look at the hourly, did produce five waves down off of that high. One, two, three, four, five. And, <clears throat> or one, two, three, four, five. 
So we're getting an A, a B, and a C. And I still believe there's some to go. And in fact, it could be a one, two, three, four, and then a five, and then a B down, and then a C up. So this wave two can unfold over the balance of this week. And that would fit because again, if you, part of my discussions this, this past week have been on what the Elliott account is suggesting in terms of a minor third wave continuing lower and how that would blend or work itself in with expectations for at least decent earnings from the titans of tech. And that being Apple, Amazon, Facebook, Google, Intel, so it should be okay. Microsoft should be good. NVIDIA, which came out, I believe, just now. I mean, they were due out at 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific. Stock's not really moving around. It kind of did. Now it's stuck. So either they haven't come out yet or they had the wrong dates all over the place. In any case, this is the deal right now. So in terms of that larger picture, again, I'm going to go back out to that daily. Intermediate wave one was 707 points. Intermediate wave three should come in at 1.618 times that. That's the most common Fibonacci relationship that we would add in there. And if I did that, we're looking for intermediate wave three to be 1,160 points. And that would be from this level. So 1,160 points. So we have 46, 31 actually was at high, 1,160 points. We're looking at 3,477. That's the number that I have been giving, you know, 3,480 as the completion point for intermediate wave two. Now you're seeing how I'm coming up with that and how it does fit. Now, whatever happens in here, it's not that we force it to fit in there, but that's the expectations for an intermediate third wave. So either that or this is all wrong, and I don't see it being wrong. We have too many other things that are contributing to it that haven't been fixed. Interest rates are still moving higher, regardless of us seeing you know, the bonds moving up today regardless of what is happening uh, to the stocks, regardless that the market did a fairly decent rally today. Certainly the S&P did a decent rally today and should continue higher for the next day or two or whatever until we get somebody in the Titan group that decides to spoil the party and not give uh, very good earnings. And it can happen. We saw it happen with Netflix. We can see it happen with others. We could see maybe in Google, we could see maybe in Facebook in particular. So how much lower can Facebook go? Well, we'll see. How much higher? We'll see. But in either case, it is going to be put into the overall price for the S&P, the ES, and that then affects our count. So we have a lot to factor in. But it's not up to us to actually go and look at each one and go like, okay, what if is it going to be? And how is it going to affect the counter? Does that turn it to bullish? Because that I do not expect. I have upside targets that this minute wave two can come to. But what it cannot do, it cannot go up and cross uh, 4509. Cannot go above 4509. Then it's breaking the starting point of minute wave one and therefore is no longer a minute second wave. So where can it go? We're gonna discuss that in a, in a moment. But now, again, when you hear me talk about Fibonacci and relationships, the wave two, of course, is related to wave one. And that's about it. We use the top of wave two to put in, um, extensions for an intermediate third wave, because we're going to look at the, the relationship becomes between intermediate wave three, we're looking to see how far it's going to go, and intermediate wave one. And that, so intermediate wave three began right here. Therefore, we would take our extensions and from the top, and I did use this low, Fibonacci. 
and up to that high. And then you're going to get your levels for intermediate wave three. And then now we're, now we're going forward, but we know we're in the third, it breaks down into five waves of minor degree. So instead of building from the smallest to the largest building up, we're doing it in reverse. We're going from our largest in a corrective phase down to the, the smallest level as all of these different layers unfold. That's my point. My point is, is that the degree of correction isn't six months. The time factor isn't six months, isn't a year. So to force a count or to, to try to force quicker account normally does not work in the favor of the person attempting to do it. So patience is required, understanding that things will take their time to unfold. Understand in the midst of all of that, we will have a week where we have titans, these big, big technical companies that are getting ready to report earnings that in the past, Google, Amazon, Apple, all of them have, and Microsoft, have blown the doors off of their earnings and had huge gains. Will that pattern continue? I believe we're now entering into that period where we might get a good earnings report, but we're moving into a more difficult economic period that involves interest rates, that involves money, that involves a lot of different factors that go into each one of these companies' earnings does not by any means mean that Apple's not a good company, Amazon's not a good company. They sure are all good companies. That's why they're titans, because they've been good companies. Are they going to have to slow down? It's not that they have to. There is no choice in it. It's going to happen because it's happening to the economy, which is happening to us, and that you know, puts a lot of things forward. So it's not our job to actually, well, unless it's really something you have a hankering for, to go through and to do that detailed type of analysis. There are people out there that can do it, but it does become us as analysts and us as traders, it becomes our responsibility when we're trading our own money to have our own view, to look at it and know why I came up with that view. So, Actually, there's no right or wrong in this. So you're learning for yourself. So in, in essence, and folks, really, it's something that I want to continue writing about, but it's you, we as individuals are our own gurus. And that's the truth. There's nothing that stops any of us from actually applying these same principles, these same guidelines, these same rules. You don't break the rules. Even in your own trading, you have your trading rules. Don't break the rules. When you do, it's going to spell trouble. It usually will not end well. There are times, and more than one, where luck will be in your favor, and you'll get out, and you'll make some money. And many other times, you'll be on the wrong side, and that move will just take off, and you'll be like, holy crap. Back to the count. Back to what I'm talking about. But just understand these things exist. So, Big, big picture here. Like I said, this rally finishes at least 80 to 90 years of rally, of advance. The cycle five began at the 2009 low. So this one is correcting, on this level, it's correcting 13 years of rally. The primary degree fifth wave began at the March 2020 lows. So this is correcting two years and on down. And this is approximately almost the same, but we did get that first wave. Yeah, it also started off 2020. So this is also about two years. So it, and it's fitting. So to believe that six months in, we're gonna get this turn of heart, the market's gonna turn, is not, I think it's not really looking at it realistically. Because again, we need to balance that out over, well, what's changed? What's changed on the interest rate front? 
what's changed on the inflation front that would suggest that the Fed may or may not keep a more hawkish attitude and maybe turn back to dogish attitude and not raise the rates all that much. I think it would spell doom. I think it would spell, oops, market, you, you, I wouldn't go up. Not a, no, because I don't agree with it because it doesn't take much to go to the grocery store, to go to, to the gas pump and realize what it's costing you or to go to Home Depot or to go to any of the retail. And what is it costing you? How much more of your paycheck are you now having to put out just to keep it all going? So back to all of this, it's going to take time. So we are starting, I told you, we turned the corner on the minor third wave. Well, going down to that hourly chart, I can see we did five down off of that high. But is that all of, of, of minor three? Well, if I go back out and I just take a look, it's like, no, no, it, it can't be. It's 316 points. So yes, technically we did break the low, but we're in a larger third. Minor three should be getting us below 40, 4,101. And they're calling 4,100 strong support. And it likely will be, but it should break. And the market should continue. So they're putting a lot of emphasis on 4,100. And now you're going to see why it's going to build up. That if it does break, we're going to slide. We're going to get an acceleration point. And that'll be why. So in any case, um, here we are now. Wave two, minute wave two, has potential. And again, this now fits. We're still in the midst of Titan earnings week. I don't know about you, but I don't know any, what's going to happen to any of this, or if it's going to be well-received or not well-received, or do we run up or do we run down? I don't know. Still yet to be seen. NVIDIA, which I would have thought would get a bigger, bigger response, either they haven't reported yet or nobody cares. I move on. <laughs> Minute wave two. We have our next stop is, I'm going to go back down to the hourly so I'm not squinting my eyes. All right. Bottom of minute wave one. That looks like a single move up. I don't think I can call that an ABC, but I can call it a one, two, three, four, five, more than likely, or three. One, two, maybe a three and a four. And if that's the case, we're looking for support at 42.85 to hold. Mm, I don't, it should not, actually, it should not go down to 42.69. That would be the implication should that break, because there's your next moving averages down there. But I don't think, I think it holds. If it does, then I'm looking for it to break above 42.98. And then that happens. You're going to get more buyers, so there'll be an acceleration to the upside, because see how flat that is? It's providing resistance. And if it provides resistance when it breaks, that's the next level. So again, we're talking another $16, $17, S&P dollars to go up. What is the most common for a wave two? 43.52, which would be the 50% level to 43.89, which would be the 618% level, or somewhere in between. S&P has been actually doing the in-between, but at least it gets up to there. So expectations right now that it should, it should at least get to 43.15. It might take a pause there because it is resistance. It is Fibonacci resistance. But I believe it goes through it, and we get up here, all in the context of a wave two. What wave two cannot do is go up and break 45.19. It cannot. But it certainly can get to here. Now, on that, if it gets above 43.52 and it keeps chugging along, our next stop should be a test of 43.87 to 43.90. That's the 200 is sitting right with, the, with Fibonacci 0.618. They go together. Often 382 sits along with the 50%. 
and et cetera, et cetera. So right now we're still moving up. 50's flat, 200's flat. I'm looking for them, the 50 to get broken, the 200 to possibly get tested. We still have Apple, Amazon, Facebook, Google, and Microsoft. And Twitter out there somewhere too. But we already know that story. Now, once that is complete, I honestly do believe strongly that minute wave three then begins. Then we're in that sequence of three of three of three that I continue to talk about. We'd be in minute three of minor three of intermediate three. They can continue to subdivide, but this also tells you that this third wave is building up and that built up coil, so to speak, will unwind with another series of boom, 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 downside action. So wave three in its infancy, still the minor third, the intermediate third, the actual intermediate third, again, yeah, the intermediate three, the minor three, and still in the infancy, haven't even begun yet, of the minute three. That's still down there. When we get down to those levels, we have a four and a five to complete the minor three. Then we have a four and a five to complete the intermediate three. Then we start over with another ABC correction. So this is the unfolding, but we're doing it forward. So we have to allow the time for each one of these waves to come to full potential. And Unfortunately, often we have to wait for those waves to begin to unfold fully before we can understand how, how much we can we look for within that bounce. And as we were dropping down, I said, yep, I'm still expecting lower levels. Even, even as I came on last night, I expected lower levels. We got them. But what I also said at those times was be aware and accept that the market needs to bounce. That's not putting on the market turning bullish. That's not putting on that, oh my God, we're going to go up and up and up. That is just nothing but look for a bounce. And the market then lets us know as to what degree that bounce is going to be. And again, I go back to the hourly to show you the clarification. This is kind of where we sat coming in Sunday. If we had gone down and done this on Sunday, then all of this would have been part of the of a correction, but it wasn't. It was one, two, three, four, five. The market's always going to make itself clear. It wasn't that clear. So we left open both sides. Now we've got that. So pretty much it's the upside. That's what I'm looking for. And now we know to go ahead and start looking for a, well, an ABC structure up. Wave A, as we just went through and, and, and explained, A waves can either be a three-wave structure or a five-wave structure. The whole pattern can be a flat, where the A, the B, and the C all kind of see the top and bottom, so it's kind of like boxy, or it can be a zigzag. Wave A, zig, then you get a B wave zag and you get a C wave zig, zig zag, excuse me, zig zag. In a, in a, and then a, a small rally in between. So two basic forms for a corrective pattern. What then consists inside there, in other words, it's like, it's either gonna be zigzag or flat. There's basically just one version of the zigzag. That is a five, three, five. But there are several versions, acceptable versions for a uh, flat. They, they, we get triangles in there. You get a double ABC, a triple ABC, and all kinds of things can happen inside of it. So we're going to have to allow the market to tell us. Right now, I'm feeling pretty strong that this A wave of this minute two will be five waves. And we're sitting in a four 
waiting for direction. Waiting for something that's going to go pop. First one, we got to break above 42.98. We do that successfully. 43.15 is next in line. We break above that. I would suspect that if we get to there, we'll pull back again down to here, down to this level. That'll be the fourth wave. Get up there, you're putting in little five. Then you're looking for an ABC down. That would be the minimum that I'd look for it to come down to. If not, then back down. So what you can then do is the same thing we just did on this dump. We're gonna put in retracements from <clears throat> where a wave A started to the finishing point of wave A, and that'll give us the retracement for B wave. Most common, and being that it's a five wave structure, most common is gonna be 50%, 618. 3A2 is in there, but it's not the most common. So I wouldn't look for it first. It's gonna provide some resistance, but I'm not essentially looking for that all the way around. But it can. Again, you take it when it gets here. Now, that's what I'm looking for to unfold and it may take several days, possibly even all you know, the week. I am not changing my longer term count or my view unless one, this wave in progress, this wave in progress breaks above 4509. I do not expect that. So I would be surprised. Makes me stand back, review the whole thing again. Right now it's following pretty clean. So I have no, no outside reason other than a miracle that we should be above 4509 and stick above 4509 is if the rally is back on, there has to be substantiated reason. It cannot be a whim, a hope, and a prayer. It has to be substantiated reason. So fact, inflation's dead. Fact, China's not fighting another huge breakout in Beijing and they're gonna get a bunch of crap from its citizenship, citizenry, because they're gonna get locked down in Beijing. They're still locked down in Shanghai. Causes problems. We still have Vladimir Putin threatening the West on, in terms of you rearm the Ukraine. I'm warning you, don't do it. He's got something. He's trying to th rattle things up. You think we should rally? What would something more serious happen? What will we do? Ignore it? Ignore it as a world? Ignore it as a market? I don't think so. If nothing, it involves adjustment. If nothing, it involves, you want to keep buying this? When the money is going to have to go somewhere else? When who knows what's up anybody's sleeve? So you're getting my drift. Okay, so for tomorrow, I would expect to continue Asian to the upside. If indeed the A wave is done, then you run your Fibonacci from here to here. And you'll get that if it starts to break below, oh, let me tell where that is again, 4083. It wants to latch itself onto there instead of here. 4383, 4283. Breaks there, we're gonna to go to down 4270 approximately. Then we got the eight at 4268. Breaks there, we're starting to head lower. I'm not looking that good. And then we have the, 20 at 42.61. And then, we, then you see it starts to clear the decks. Some price support coming off. But I wouldn't be looking for that, actually, because I think this is A, we got a B, and we still got a C. So I am still looking for these upper levels. I am going to end it there. Uh, thank you for listening. I went into a little bit more detail because I, I need to, as we're moving forward, so that we're all basically have an understanding and that we can then turn our mindset to focus on what's happening in front of us. There is plenty to do, opportunities both, good and bad. And if your mindset's not there and you're just kind of jumping in and something misses your attention, it can be very costly. And I had one of those today. I'll be honest with you, I had one of those today. And unfortunately for me, it was only a one lot because that's all I had to get in. But it was enough. And what happened is, is I had gone away from the computer. I came back, looked at it, looked at it. It broke the 20. So down here, 
it broke the 20. And, and it wasn't it broke the 20 in the hourly. It broke the 20 on, on like a one minute. And that normally gets you a nice little drop. It broke it. I did. And two huge buy orders came flipping in. Again, this was in the NASDAQ. The NASDAQ in 30 seconds to a minute, no more than a minute, went up $80. $80 in 80 in less than a minute. And you're just looking like, holy crap. A one lot, a one lot turns into like $1,300 loss, $1,500 loss before you've blinked your eyes. Now, recoverable, sure. Avoidable, mm, <laughs> likely. But still, this is what is happening in a corrective phase. You'll hear me say often, I don't like trading corrections because you get that type of a move. This is easy. I shouldn't say it quite that way. This, the market makes itself very clear when it's trending. These are great because they're tradable. You're expecting them and you're getting them and you know they're going to come in under expectations because the intensity and the depth that the sellers are taking the market. This is corrective. We had both. We had good sells. We had good buys. So, you know, focus is going to be important and mindset is important and it will be so going forward. All right. I'm going to leave it there. Hope everybody has a really great trading day tomorrow. And the next update will be on Tuesday, the 26th.